Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmidlkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute here in downtown Chicago. And today's question is, can, ton can tongue stimulation improve outcomes in multiple sclerosis? And this to me, I think is a really important one because one, I haven't talked much about tongue stimulation at all and we do it a lot here in our clinic. Um, and that's because it has a ton of benefits. Um, the tongue is known as the bridge to the brain. It's like the eyes are the window to the brain. The tongue is the bridge. And I'll show you a picture of that here in a sec. Next, multiple sclerosis is a debilitating disease for um, generally, it's, so it's an autoimmune disease that can be caused by a variety of things like food sensitivities, uh, environmental toxins, infections. Uh, and it causes the uh, immune system to attack our myelin sheet or the, the covering that is around our axon, the connections between our brain cells. And when that happens, it can lead to multiple symptoms from chronic pain, um, numbness and tingling, uh, dropping things, difficulty with coordination, uh, double vision or, or other eye movement issues, blurred vision. And I think the reason why this one is so important here is because uh, most, most avenues for multiple sclerosis are like high dose steroids um, to decrease inflammation and then um, physical therapy. And so what I'm gonna show here is that in combination with the physical therapy, doing some tongue stimulation can really help these patients. And so first, let's just go to Let's just go to why tongue stimulation is so effective. And so here is a, here's a picture of a person's head with part of their brain. Down here is their brain stem, the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla. And then down here is more of the spinal cord. Uh, back here is the cerebellum. But over here is the person's tongue. And I just want to show you there's a lot of nerves that are attached to the tongue. And so uh, really, the tongue is from here, the tip, and it goes all the way back here to the epiglottal region. Um, this all is the tongue, even though this is only the red part. Um, they're just showing what nerves innervate different parts of the tongue. And so you have cranial nerve 5, the trigeminal nerve goes to the tongue, and that brings in sensation. Then you have cranial nerve 7, also goes to the tongue. It brings in taste from this part of the tongue. Cranial nerve nine brings in taste and sensation from the back of the tongue, and the vagus nerve also brings in some taste from the very back of the tongue. And so stimulation of the tongue is going to be a highly active or highly activating connection into this brainstem. Um, and it can be, um, even though they only show the trigeminal nerve going up into this midbrain, it actually goes into the pons and medulla as well. And so um, it's highly stimulating into the medulla and then up all the way into the brain stem and then even up then into the brain. It's kind of like this, we can set this electrical tone or electrical um, signal and uh, general oscillatory balance in the brain um, just from tongue stimulation. And it can do a lot of things from decreasing anxiety to um, improving coordination. And then obviously, as you'll see here, um, improving or decreasing inflammation and improving uh, multiple sclerosis outcomes. And so now let's go to the paper here. And so this paper is, it's from um, Multiple Sclerosis Journal, the Experimental, Translational, and Clinical, and it's from 2017. It's called Non-Invasive Tongue Stimulation Combined with Intensive Cognitive and Physical Rehabilitation Induces Neuroplastic Changes in Patients with MS. Um, and so we're just going to basically look at the abstract here. They used uh, non-invasive tongue stimulation using the portable neuromodulation stimulator, the PONS device. Um, this PONS, I'm pretty sure it's still not FDA approved. Um, it's still undergoing clinical trials, but there's been a lot of, a lot of good evidence from it. And it is, they combined it with intensive cognitive and physical rehab on working memory, on gait or walking, on balance, and then looked at changes in the brain. Um, 
So there's 14 patients. Seven of them were using the tongue stimulation. Seven um, had a sham stimulation. So basically the pons unit was on their tongue, but there was no, no stimulation. Um, so this is a very small study. Generally, it's more of a pilot study, but we did see some cool outcomes. So patients received physical therapy and working memory training for 14 weeks. Um, they looked at the fMRI, so the changes in functional connectivity of the brain, and uh, also other tests. So tests like the sensory organization test. This is a balanced kind of performance test, motor performance measures, and a neuropsychological assessment. So on the results, um, the, from the SOT, so the sensory organization tests, the active group showed significant improvement from baseline, um, and there was fMRI signals that showed these signal changes in the left primary motor cortex for the active region. The primary motor cortex is the main motor cortex of the brain, so therefore, um, if we have better functional changes, then we're going to have better movement outcomes. Um, now, the sham group had increased activity in both premotor cortices, so not the prime motor, but the premotor. All individuals had improved working memory, but only the active group showed an increase in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. The dorsolateral prefrontal cortex is our main working memory center. I'll show you a picture here in a sec. Actually, let's do it right now. And so right here is that dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. This is mainly used for executive functioning, working memory. Um, a lot of times with concussions, we have an issue here and it can lead to attention issues. Um, that premotor cortex is right here. That was what the sham group had improvements in, but the um, left primary motor cortex is what the active tongue stimulation had improvements in, okay? Let's go back to the paper. So in conclusion, they show that the pond stimulation can enhance motor performance and working memory while also driving neuroplasticity. And like I said, so this is important. It's not just, um, we're not just trying to improve on, on certain measures. We want a, a good neuroplastic process going. And what's happening with the tongue stimulation is we're getting this electrical oscillatory activation to improve um, connections within the brain. And so this is what the PONS device looks like. It's relatively small. This is like a, this is just a coin here. And so this part goes right in the tongue and it, and it causes stimulation. So here's um, a picture of a woman with that on uh, doing a 20 minute balance exercise. And so they did a 20 minute balance exercise while having this on. And so they, they were combining the physical therapy with the tongue stimulation. Um, here's an example of some imagery they did, uh, visual imagery of walking and standing. Um, and again, and then here is one of the working memory, um, working memory tasks that they did. And so how we do it here at the clinic is we're going to, we don't use it, we don't have a PONS device. Um, we have a, either a mini stim device or an SSEP machine. It's just um, an acronym for somatosensory vocal potential. And what we do is we stimulate either one side of the tongue, both sides of the tongue or the other side based on what we find in your exam. And we, we try to bias one side of the brain that might be more deficient. Um, but sometimes it's good to have both. And that both is where we're going to get more um, of that bridging connection. Versus if we're doing one side, we might just want one side of the brain stem that's a little more deficient. And so again, this is specifically looking at multiple sclerosis patients, but at the same time, tongue stimulation is such an important tool that we can use with everybody from post-concussion to dysautonomia, dizziness, uh, vertigo, um, autoimmune diseases like this one, um, and neurodegeneration. And so um, I think it is a really beneficial study here, and, and I'll, I can show more studies here in the future on tongue stimulation, how it is so important. So I hope everyone liked this one. Um, please leave your comments or, or questions below if you have any. Uh, if you have any suggestions for future topics, I would love to hear them. Thanks so much, and have a great day. Stay healthy.